Hi everybody. So today I'm going to be repairing the tear in this corset. So I'm going to show you the close-up of this tear again. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'm kind of, I'm going to be sewing this at a weird kind of uncomfortable angle for me and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But anyway, right there is the tear. So it's about half an inch, but I just don't want to um, wear it with that little tear in it because I don't want the the seam to just like spread open any further than that. Now, when I say tear, I just mean it's the thread itself that had broken, not the fabric itself. So that's actually very fortunate. If the fabric had broken, I would be screwed. Well, <laughs> not screwed, but I would um, have to at least patch it. Um, in this situation, all I need to do is basically repair that seam. So what I would actually do if, you know, if say one of my corsets for one of my clients had uh, yeah, had broken a seam like this, what I would do is um, if I wanted to make it completely seamless, I would open up the corset. So I would basically take off the binding um, and take off the lining side and then remove the bones on either side of this seam. Um, pick open the top stitching on that side and then re-machine stitch just that one part and then you know re-sew the boning channels and put everything back together put the lining back on and sew the binding back on um, because I'm not doing this for a client I'm just fixing it for my own purposes I'm gonna be a little bit more lazy about it so what I'm actually going to do instead is just mend this by hand using a very tight whip stitch. Um, and what a whip stitch is, is basically I'm going in one side and I am coming up through the other side and I'm going to just keep on sewing in that, I guess it's a continual counterclockwise motion in a spiral all the way down. And I'm probably gonna start uh, like maybe a quarter inch above the rib and, and a quarter inch after the rib. If I have any, have any thread left over, I'm going to um, go back up again and just make it overkill because I really don't want that to burst open again. And I'm going to hope that this works. Um, admittedly, I have not had to repair too many seams um, because in the, what, 70 corsets that I've uh, owned and in the past three years, this is the second corset that I'd ripped open. And uh, the first one, I it was still back when I didn't know how to season corsets properly in the first place. So um, I'm going to hope that this works. But if it does pop open again, then what I'm just going to do is um, just open it up and machine stitch it. So this thread is not an exact match, but it is uh, about as good as I care for it to be. And I actually, I'm horrible with um, sewing with thimbles. I just, I cannot get a feel of what I'm doing. So I poke the needle through and then I put my thimble on and push it as far as I need to grab the other end. And it might kind of be a slow and clumsy process, but it's the only way that I can do it personally without feeling like I'm all thumbs. And a lot of this is going by feel, like how basically how far I need to put it in and how far I need to push it out again, because I don't want to just get the very edge of it because the very edge is probably just the dupioni, probably just the silk. So I'm actually feeling for a certain amount of I guess thread density to make sure that I am actually grabbing the coutille underneath and not just the silk itself because if I want to sew through just the silk it will probably rip from strain again. Okay, so here's what it looks like when it's finished. And in retrospect, that thread was actually not a perfect match. It is sort of hard to match this silk because it is shot with like violet underneath. Um, so I would need like an equally iridescent thread, which I don't know if exists. Um, 
So it is a little bit noticeable, but I am past the point of caring. Sorry if that sounds harsh. Um, I'm just, I'm not excited about having to mend this corset. Um, but it is rather overkill. I just did a really tight whip stitch all up and down. So this is about an inch. Um, and the, the, the tear itself in the seam was about half an inch. And like I said before, I did another like about a quarter of an inch above and about a quarter of an inch below um, just to make sure that the rest of the seam isn't going to unravel. Um, while I was stitching it, I realized that I probably had enough space between the bones that if I was really feeling lazy and wanted to live dangerously, I could probably um, take out my domestic sewing machine and just do like zigzag or, or satin stitch um, in between the bones. But I didn't want to do that. One, because I didn't want to risk hitting one of the bones. And secondly, it would have also shown on the underside. And you know, like if you don't care about the underside because it's just the lining, then you can do that if you want and if you don't mind breaking your needle on a couple bones. Um, but I wanted to do it by hand because I just wanted to keep the lining intact. And anyways, I will have to um, take off the binding a little bit later on to um, fix that part anyways. And so I don't want the lining to be like stitched on in case something arose that I would need to take it off anyways. I didn't want to have to rip through all these tight threads. So there you go. This is more of a, a documenting as opposed to a tutorial in and of itself. Um, so I'm going to see how this works. I'm going to start breaking it in again or still tomorrow and see how it holds up. So I hope this was helpful to you and I will, I guess, see you guys tomorrow for the next seasoning video. Bye guys.